Okay guys, I welcome you all to Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that determine the external reactions at A and F for the roof truss loaded as shown. The vertical load represents the effect of the supported roofing materials while the 400 new posts represent a wind load. So this 400 represents the wind load and this the remaining vertical forces represent the roofing material and we have to find the resultant at point A and F. So at F we have the roller support so here we will have the only vertical reaction which is going to act in the upward direction let's say let's say this is F of Y and at A we will have two reactions since we have a pin joint so we will have A Y and here we will have Ax, let's see, this is Ax. So we have to find these reactions, this Ax, Ay, and this F of Y, they are required. Now from A to F, this length is 10 meters. So the first job in this problem is that we need to have the vertical distances of all these vertical forces from that point A or from this point F. So for that, we have to find this Ag length, that what is the length of this Ag from A to G and from G to F. So if we look into this A, F and C, this outer triangle, so we have this angle is 60 degree, this angle is 30 degree. So if this is 60, this is 30, then this angle must be 90 degrees. This angle must be 90 degrees. Since the summation of angle of the triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. So this is 60 plus 30 is 90. So 180 minus 90 is 90. So this angle is 90. So this means that this AFC triangle is a right angle triangle. So from this we can say that uh, this AF is the hypotenuse of this outer triangle, this AFC. So from this we can write that uh, AC that AC length is the perpendicular of this triangle. So we can say that 10 sine of 30, let me draw that triangle here, let's say, let's say we have that triangle here. So this is 90 degree, this is that point C, this is that point A and this is that point F and this AF length is 10 meters, this is given, this is 30. So if we apply sine 30, let me write that sine of 30, sine of 30 is perpendicular which is AC divided by hypotenuse. Now the hypotenuse is 10 meters in front of the 90 degrees always the hypotenuse. So this is AC divided by 10. So from this we can say that AC is equal to 10 sine of 30 and sine of 30 is 1 divided by 2. So from this we can say that AC length is 5 meters. So from this we can say that this length is 5 meters. This is 5. Now if we look into this BG line, so this BG line is perpendicular. This is perpendicular since this 400 Newton force is perpendicular. So this is this is perpendicular and this if this is perpendicular if this is 90 degrees then this is also 90 degrees. So if if this is 90 degrees then we can say that this A, G and B, this triangle is also a right angle triangle since this is 60, this is 30 and this is 90. So now if, if this is 90, if this angle is 90, if this is 60, this is 90, then this angle is also 30. Since this BGC triangle is also a right angle triangle. So now if this is 30, then this whole angle is 60. This whole angle is 60. Now if, if this angle is 60, this angle is 60 and this angle is 60. This uh, AGC triangle, this is right angle triangle. Remember that, let me write that AGC triangle. Uh, this, is, this is not right, this is equilateral triangle, remember all the angles are same. This is equilateral triangle. This angle is 60, this is 60, this is 60. So A, G, C triangle, this is an equilateral triangle. So this means that the length of this, uh, the sides of this equilateral triangles are equal. So if this AC length is 5 meters, 
then this AG length is 5 meters and this GC length is 5 meters. So, we can say that AC length is equal to AG length is equal to GC length since this is an equilateral triangle. So, now we know that this AG length is 5 meters. So, now if this AG is 5 meters then this GF is 5 meters. So, this length is 5 meters and this length is 5 meters. Now, if I drop a perpendicular from this point C onto that AG line, so we have this triangle, let us say this point, this intersection point is let us say C dash. So, now this ACC dash triangle is also a right angle triangle and this AC length is 5 feet. We know that, let me draw that right angle triangle. This AC, this is that point C, this is A, this is that C dash, this is 5 this angle is 60. Now, this AC dash from here to here this is 5 cos of 60, this is 5 cos of 60 and this will give us 2.5 meters. So, this is 2.5. So, now this is 2.5. So, if, if this is this AG length is 5, so this is 2.5. So, this means that this point C is uh, at the midpoint of this AG. So, this is 2.5, this is also 2.5. Now, if I drop a perpendicular from this point E, let us see if we drop a perpendicular here. So, then we can see that uh, this angle is 30, this angle is 30. So, if this is 30 and this is perpendicular, this is 90, this is 90, then this angle is 60 and this angle is 60. So, this complete angle is 120. Let me show it that this angle is 120. Now, we can find this GE and this EF length. So, from this triangle, if this angle is 30 and this angle is 30, so the opposite sides are equal. So, this GE is equal to EF. So, I will write that GE, GE length is equal to EF length. And if we want to find, let us say, if we want to find this GE or EF, we can apply the law of cosines. So, we know that uh, these two sides are equal and this uh, the side opposite to angle 120 is 5 meters. So, you can apply the law of cosine. So, that will be equal to 5 square equals to this GE square plus EF square minus 2 GE into EF and cos of the included angle between these two which is 120. Now, GE is equal to EF. So, we can replace this GE by EF. This is EF and we can replace this by EF as well. So, this will be 2 EF square minus this, this will become square cos of 120. And now from this, we can take EF square as common. So, this is EF square, this is, uh, or we can take 2 EF square common. So, this is 1 minus cos of 120, this is 5 square. And now from this, we can write that EF square is 5 square divided by 2 into 1 minus cos of 120. And if you want to find EF length, then we have to take the square root and this gives us this gives us 5 square root 3 this is 25 this 5 square is 25 divided by 2 1 minus this so this gives us 5 square root 3 divided by 3 so now we know this ef again if we drop that perpendicular from here let's say this is that perpendicular so this is 30 and this is that e dash now, this EF is known, this is 5 square root 3 divided by 3. So, then this E dash F is, we can write that E dash F, this is the cos component of EF. So, we can write that this is equal to EF cos of that 30 degree. Now, EF is known which is 5 square root 3 divided by 3 cos of 30. So, this answer cos of 30, this gives us 5 divided by 2, which is 2.5. So, E dash F 
is equal to 2.5 meters. So now this length is 2.5. So if this total length is 5 and if this is 2.5, then this is 2.5. So now we know that this point E is at a distance of 2.5 meters in the horizontal direction. This point D is at a distance of 5 meters from that point F. This point C is at a distance of 7.5 and this point A is at a distance of 10 meters from that point F. So now let me erase all these. Now we have determined all those uh, perpendicular distances of these vertical forces from point F. So now we can say that this length is 2.5 from here to here this length is 2.5 this is that E dash this is 2.5 meters and this is C dash this is 2.5 meters and this is 2.5 meters. Now we can find these reactions. Now if I apply the summation of moment about point G let me apply the summation of moment about point g this will be equal to 0 since the truss is in equilibrium and the counterclockwise moment is positive. So now as we can see that this 500 Newton force is passing through that point g so it is not going to produce the moment about that point g since the perpendicular distance of uh, this force from that point g is 0 so this is not going to produce the moment about that point g and this 400 Newton force is passing through that point g so it is not going to produce the moment about that point g. So now uh, we can say that uh, this Ay is producing the clockwise moment about that point G. So I will write minus and the perpendicular distance of this Ay from that point G is 5 meters. This is 2.5 plus 2.5. So we can write that 5 Ay. Similarly, this uh, Ax is passing to that point G. So it is not producing the moment about that point G. This 250 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment, uh, the counterclockwise moment about that point G. So I will write plus 250 and the perpendicular distance of this 250 Newton force from that point G is 5 meter as well. So I will multiply this with 5. Similarly, this 500 Newton force is producing the counterclockwise moment. I will write plus and the perpendicular distance of this 500 Newton force from that point G is 2.5 meters. I will multiply this with 2.5. Similarly, this 500 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment. So I will write minus 500 and the perpendicular distance of this 500 Newton force from that point G is 2.5. And similarly, this 250 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment about that point G. So I will write minus. 250 and the perpendicular distance of this 250 Newton force from that point G is 5 meters. So I will multiply this with 5 and similarly this F of Y is producing the counterclockwise moment about that uh, point G. So I will write plus F of Y and the perpendicular distance of this F of Y from that point G is 5 meters. So I will multiply this with 5 and this is equal to 0. So now if we look into this equation, so this and this cancels out each other and this and this cancel out each other. So we are left with minus 5 Ay plus 5 Fy, this is equal to 0. And from this we can say that this 5 Ay minus 5 Fy, this is equal and this is from this we get that Ay is equal to Fy. So this is this is very important conclusion both the reactions are equal uh, in the vertical direction at A and F. Now if we apply the uh, summation of moment about point A equals to 0 and again if we assume that the counterclockwise moment is positive. So now as we can see that about A uh, this Ax and Ay and this 250 Newton force they are not going to produce the moment. So all the remaining forces are producing the moment. So as we can see that this 400 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment about that point A. So I will write uh, minus 400 and the perpendicular distance of this 400 Newton force from uh, this point A is this distance this AB 
and as we can see that this uh, as we have discussed that this AGC is a right angle triangle this angle is 60 and this is 30. So, if this is 30 and this is 30 then this length and this length they are equal and we know that this AC length is 5 meters. So, if this is equal then this EB length is 2.5 meters. So, the perpendicular distance of this 400 Newton force on this point A is this EB which is 2.5. So, I will multiply this with 2.5. Similarly, this 500 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment about that point A. So, I will write minus 500 and the perpendicular distance of this 500 Newton force from that point A is 2.5 meters. So, we will multiply this with 2.5. This 500 Newton force is producing again the clockwise moment. So, I will write minus 500 and the perpendicular distance of this 500 Newton force from that point A is 2.5 plus 2.5 this is 5 meters. Similarly, this 500 Newton force is producing again the clockwise moment. I will write minus 500 and the perpendicular distance of this 500 Newton force from that point E is 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2.5. So, this is 7.5 and this 250 Newton force is producing the clockwise moment about that point E as well. So, we will write minus 250 and the perpendicular distance of this 250 Newton force from that point A is 10 meters. So, we will multiply this with 10 and this f of y is producing the counterclockwise moment. So, I will write plus f of y and the perpendicular distance of this f of y from that point A is 10 meters. So, I will multiply this with 10 and this is equal to 0. So, we have to find all these. This is minus 400 into 2.5 minus 500 into 2.5 minus 500 into 5 minus 500 into 7.5 and minus 250 into 10. So, this gives us 11,000. So, we can write that this is minus 11,000 plus 10 Fy equals to 0 or we can say that 10 Fy is equal to 11,000 and if we divide both sides by 10, so we will get 1100 Newton. So, F of y is equal to 1100 Newton and we know, we know that A y is equal to F of y. So, A y equals to F of y is equal to 1100 Newtons. Now, if we apply to find A x, we have to apply the summation of forces along x equals to 0. So, now as we know that this 400 Newton force is making a uh, this 30 degree with the horizontal since the line of action of this force is from B to G, right. So, if I draw a horizontal line here then this angle is 30. So, we can resolve this 400 Newton force into its component. So, it will have the horizontal component in this direction and this will be the cos component. So, this is this is 400 cos of 30 degrees. So, if we apply the summation of forces along x and this is our positive x direction. So, this a x is acting in the positive x. So, I will write a x and this cos component of this 400 is acting in the positive x. So, I will write plus 400 cos of 30 and this will be equal to 0 since there are there is no other force in the horizontal direction. So, from this we can say that a x is equal to minus 400 cos of 30. So, this is 400 cos of 30. This gives us 346.41. So, this is minus 346.41 Newtons and the minus signs tells us that the assumed direction of A x is not accurate. A x is acting in the opposite direction. So, we have to write that A x magnitude is 346.41 Newton and it is acting towards the left. So, this is the reaction at A in the horizontal direction and A y and F of y both are equal. So, this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe my channel for the solution of such more problems regarding engineering statics.